Hello everybody, this is Kelly with Kelly Richmond Scrapbooking. I'm a Creative Memories Advisor and I'm here today to show you how I'm going to do another blog sketch. The sketch is from May 30th, uh, 2023 and um, I've created this handout with the instructions and also the measurements. So if you would like this handout, um, go check out my um, Scrap Happy with Kelly Facebook group and ask to join that and that way you can grab this um, PDF of this handout. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different today because this is a single page layout, but a lot of times I um, scrapbook in two page layouts. Um, so I'm gonna take this single page layout, which it's a pretty simple layout, and I'm gonna make it a two page spread. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how I'm gonna do that. Um, I've already kind of picked my papers. I'm I'm still working in my daughter's album. This is um, her and she was going to girls camp. And so I've got about seven photos that I wanna put on these two pages. And of course, I don't wanna squeeze these seven pictures into one page, so I wanna do it into a two page spread. So we're gonna follow this along with this, but what I'm pretty much gonna do is take this layout and flip it um, for the other side. So when I create this element, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and just put it on the two outside borders, okay? Um, I am using the Setup Camp Collection from Creative Memories. Um, I love this collection. It's a super, super cute collection, especially when you're talking about girls and camping because they've got this really cute pinks and lime greens and just really subtle colors. So I've already kind of picked some of those out. Um, I'm just gonna set my pictures up here for now since I'm gonna start. And I am actually gonna um, just work right here on my scrapbook pages. This is normally how I do it um, because I scrapbook um, with the Creative Memories refill pages. And so um, I'm just gonna do that right on, right on the page. So for my base, I'm gonna use the pink again because um, I love it. I think it's super pretty and super subtle. Like I said, perfect for girls. So this is what I'm gonna use as my base right here. Um, this sheet I actually had used in a previous layout and so it's a little short, which is absolutely fine because we're gonna have this little one and a half inch border, um, two inches when you add this additional little piece. And so um, I'm going to just set those aside so I can put this down. And um, there's only one inch border strip cut off, so that's going to work perfect. And I'll just uh, lay over top of it. Um, now on this side, because like I said, I am going to create the same element on this side and I really don't need this um, paper right here to cut down on bulkiness and so I can use this little bit of paper. I'm actually going to trim off an inch and a half um, off of this side of this pink paper so that I can use it at another time. Um, I could leave it there but like I said I love this pink paper and so I'm going to just this little strip I can use it on something else so I'm going to set it aside over there. Okay. So that's my base, and then I'm gonna cut, it says cut a one and a half inch by 12 inch strip of icon paper, which is this strip right here. Um, and I could do something super, super busy, but I decided to do something a little subtle, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. Let me um, adhere this on here. Um, this right here on the on my page and do the same over here so I've already kind of like I said pick some things out I'll get to that part in a minute um, these are my two, my cardstock pieces that I haven't decided on yet. But I really wanted this, um, this paper right here as this little strip because I absolutely loved it. And I think I'm gonna do, instead of doing something really boldly on here, they've done a designer paper that has 
some really big icons and different things like that. Um, and I could have done that. This, let me find this. This paper right here with the little um, campers would be adorable over here. Um, the only thing is, is, and I, I could really still do it and put maybe this as that little strip, but they were in cabins, they weren't in campers. So I'm hesitant to use it, but I also really like the fact that this green right here kind of picks up the green in the shirt that my daughter was wearing. So I'm gonna go more with this green just to pull these together. So I'm gonna use this green paper for the for this one and a half inch strip, and I'm gonna use the back side of it for this half inch strip. So I'm gonna start cutting that. So since I'm doing for both sides, I'm gonna need to cut two at the one and a half inch mark. So this is, I'm just using my 12 inch trimmer. And then I'm gonna flip it over because I want to be a little bit choosy on this half inch that I'm gonna cut. Now this is gonna do the um, orange and the yellow, which would probably be okay. Let me let me let me take a peek at it. See what it looks like. I'm gonna flip it around not necessarily my favorite. So I'm gonna cut another half inch strip. And this time it has the pink and the green. Um, that might blend in too much too. So let's see, I might just like change my whole idea on this little strip. Cause I'm not really liking either one of them. If I cut it this way, I would get all of them. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another full sheet of this green. And instead of cutting it, I'm going to cut it this way. So then I'm gonna get that full array, all of the colors. And I like that much better. Yes. Yes, much better. Yep, that's it. That was that made makes a huge difference. So I'm still gonna keep all these little all these little pieces because you never know when you're gonna need them. So I'm gonna set that aside. And let's go ahead and adhere this down. So as you can see, sometimes on your directional paper, it really does matter which way, it, uh, which way you cut it, which way you use it. Um, and that's that paper right there is a prime example. Put this on up along the edge. Okay, I'm going to do the same on this other side. Put a little adhesive on it. So there we go. All right, so, so we're gonna crop our photos. Um, so it's this photo right here. So let's get to cropping our photos. And I'm gonna just kind of lay them out first so I know exactly which photo is going in which direction so that I don't crop the wrong one. 
I'm gonna use this card right here um, as this piece right here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so um, this photo is the one that's gonna be cropped to four and three quarters by three and three quarters. So four and three quarters is, they always say the length across first. So four and three quarters <clears throat> by three and three quarters. Um, and then let's see, this photo is three and three quarters. I'm just gonna trim a little bit off of both sides. Nope, didn't need to. Three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So there we go. And then this one down in the corner is two and a third. Sorry, two and three quarters. Wow, I'm not reading very well today. So two and three quarters wide by three and three quarters. So just a quarter of an inch off. I'm going to take just a tiny bit off the top and a tiny bit off the bottom. Okay. Perfect. So there's those two. And I'm going to switch over to this side and kind of do this one. Now, um, in this, so like I said, I'm just going to flip it. So this is a variety mat, which is a six by four. So I have a six by four photo that I'm just going to leave. I'm not gonna touch it at all. I'm just gonna leave it exactly like that. I don't have to trim it because it's already six by four, okay? Um, so then this picture next to it is gonna be this one right here because remember I'm flipping it. I could do it exactly the same, but I visually I think I, I'm gonna like it better if I flip it. So this photo right here is gonna be two and three quarters. Now this photo, I don't know if you can see it, is blurry, but I'm gonna put it in there just because it shows her, it's the only picture that was taken of her rock climbing and repelling. So even though it's blurry, I'm putting it in her book. I'm gonna put it in there because I want to make sure that that is documented so two and three quarters by three and I don't want to cut off too much of the rope so I'm going to cut more off the bottom because I want to make sure I keep some of that on the top So that one's gonna go right there. Once it has a mat around it, it's gonna be the perfect four inches that butts right alongside this one right here, okay? So now with this one, we have one horizontal and one vertical photo, but I have two vertical photos, but that's gonna be okay because instead of this um, decorative element going across this photo, I'm gonna just switch it and put it down the side. So these photos, I'm gonna cut the same size um, so they can go nicely next to each other. And I'm just gonna do the same as this, which is three and three quarters. By five. Now, she has a bunch of flowers on her head, so I don't wanna cut off all the flowers. Just checking how much more I need off the bottom, about a quarter of an inch. Check it again, a little tiny bit more. And then 
we're gonna do the same with this one, three and three quarters. Let's cut it off this side. You know, good doing girly things like braiding each other's hair. <laughs> That's what you do at camp. Okay. So those are gonna fit right there, perfect. Okay, so I'm done with my trimming my photos. Now let's go to mats. Now the mats here, the measurements are right on here. I noticed with this photo, they took, um, and these two mats are the same color. These two, this mat is pretty, the colors in this, journaling mat or variety mat is pretty close to the same color of this paper up here. So you, I want those two colors to match. And then this is a completely different colored mat. Um, so you could all do, I could do all the same or I could do um, kind of like what they've done. What I did is this mat, this journal mat right here, this variety mat, I want to make sure that this paper element that's up above it is about the same. Okay. Um, so that is going to be five inches by one and a half inches. And I'm just going to, um, so I found this paper right here. It's very, very similar in color to that. So I think that's going to work great. It is also, it's from the, it's back of the wood grain. So it's, um, right. It's in, in the collection. So one and a half, so I'm gonna cut the one and a half strip. By five. So that's gonna go right there. I'm gonna save this for, um, for, for another project. Um, now this paper right here, because it's going down, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it in the right direction. And um, it is going to be the same length as this mat, the mats that go with these, which the mat is four inches by five and a half. So let's hope that this is, it is, look, it's almost, it's pretty close to five and a half. So we're just gonna use it. Um, so I'm just going to make it an inch and a half wide and I might have to adjust that just a little bit. So let's move that stuff out of the way. All right. So let's go to our other mats. So I picked two different colors that I want to use for mats. Um, I like the pink, the pink will stand out. So I thought I could do pink for just this one photo right here, which would be fine. The question is, I wasn't sure about the other color, whether I wanted to use this kiwi color, which is, um, it was from a cardstock buffet that I got just a couple months ago, um, cause I kind of wanted it to be green and I had a really hard time finding a green cardstock that would look nice with this tone and this one does okay. Or I could use the yellow, and I'm not really sure which one I want to use. I almost think I like the green better than the yellow. So I'm afraid with this color, it just kind of looks a blot together, um, but you put the green with it and it looks great. And that, the, this green looks great with everything else. So I've made up a mind, I'm gonna use the green. Okay, so I'm gonna put the yellow back. That's actually, uh, canary is the color. This is um, baby pink, soft pink, sorry. So I'm going to cut my mats for my soft pink first because I just need two mats. Um, and those mats are going to be um, five inches by four inches. So since I can get two mats out of a four inch strip, I'm just going to cut a four inch strip because that way I can do two more mats easily from that piece, or, or I should say four more. And then I'm going to cut five and another five. OK, 
Okay. So this one would go right here. This one would go right here. So then out of this green, I've got four more, the two on this side, the two on this side. And this mat is a three by four. And this mat is a four by five and a half. So once again, I'm gonna cut a four inch strip. And then I'm gonna cut five and a half and five and a half. Let's see, how much is this? How much is left? Five and a half, so just six and a half. So let's do, so we're not wasting too many pieces. Let's just do our two small three inch mats out of this. And then I only have this little tiny strip of waste. And then I'll do another four inch long strip here. And do my other five and a half inch. So there I can do another six inch four by six mat out of that at a later time. Okay, so let's put it all together and see what we think. Okay, so there's that side. Oh, that we're leaving the same. We're not matting that one. Okay. I already see one problem. These two can't be right next to each other. We need to spread this pink out. So, I did something wrong. Look at this pink, it's the wrong size. How did I do that? Okay, well. We're gonna have to recut this mat out of the pink. So, let's try it again. I obviously was not paying attention to what I was supposed to be doing. So four inches by five and a half. What did I cut that piece of? Now I'm curious. At five, I cut it at five and I needed five and a half. Okay. I know what I did wrong. I was going off of this measurement instead of the photo that's vertical. Okay, so we got it. All right, so now let's start assembling. So I'm gonna start in this bottom corner because in this you can see everything is all butted up next to each other and there's no space in between. So I'm gonna start down here. Make sure it's straight, which it looks like it is. I'm lining it up with the design on the paper. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> Perfect. I'm just putting adhesive in each of the corners. Um, I'm using Creative Memories Tape Runner. It's uh, the best adhesive ever. Um, I do not ever have to worry about my photos 
falling off or my page falling apart over time. I've been scrapbooking for many, many years and um, gosh, almost 30 years I've been scrapbooking and my albums are still all together. They're not falling apart. Okay, so there is our first one done. We'll add the embellishments here in a minute. Let's come over here to this page. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna start in this corner and um, try and match up the same location as where that this side started at. Now, if I wanted to get my ruler out, I could measure it or I could even move this over onto my on my mat so I can use my mat as a ruler and it looks at it, it's like one and a quarter inches up. So, and that looks, looks good. Okay, so let's, let's get this put together. Remember I said I switched the colors because I, when I was kind of dry fitting it, I didn't think about flipping it and I wanna make sure that these greens aren't right next to each other, have that um, pink kind of in between. Um, that way my layout looks um, a little bit more balanced and not, it's not just all on one side. All right, now we're gonna check to see how we did on this. Okay, so see this is a very small amount. So what I'm gonna do, so I don't have to recut this, is I'm just gonna tuck it underneath. Um, it, remember this photo is probably a little bit um, wider than the way this is set up. So that's, because we turned it a little bit. Just gonna lift this up a little bit. Line this paper up. Put that back down. Okay. All right. So that's what we have for basic, um, if I was just doing paper, I'm gonna add my embellishments. Um, they right here have kind of two embellishments right up there, which I really like that idea. I love, love this flower sticker and I love this little wood, these little wood pieces. So um, I'm gonna use this. And it looks like I can trim just this little piece right here off and now it's gonna work great. Now over here, I don't think I have as much room, so I'm not gonna use that little, the little woodsy um, wood sticks on that, but I am gonna use these leaves, this leaf sticker, which I love them. And I'm gonna just put it a little bit longer and let's see if I can trim it so it looks intentional instead of just straight. There we go. And then this other piece, we're gonna stick over here. Kind of pull the two elements together. Okay. And then 
and I thought I would put this right here. That way I can journal right there. Um, this would be super cute. I was trying to decide between Raccoon Club or Wilderness Society. Actually, I think I like the Raccoon Club. Kind of appropriate for, for girls, right? Now I'm just using these cute little word sayings just to add a little bit of fun over here. Um, S'more Addict is appropriate for my daughter. She loves everything s'mores. Um, so we're going to add those. Um, we could add a few things up here just like this, um, or they have a title here, but in order to balance my embellishments, since I'm not doing just one page, I want to put some embellishments over here so that I kind of have, um, like the three, the three rules. So the three rules of it. So I've got three different clusters. So I think what I'm going to do is put something, you know, like a bigger element or a bigger embellishment cluster over here, since I've got this one right here. I've got this one right here, which I'm going to pop up. And so I need something like right over here. So it kind of balances. So let's see what we can find. Um, I really like this. It says offline is the new luxury, which would work really great, especially for girls camp. Um, but I also want to somehow incorporate this little raccoon because then it pulls, it's going to kind of tie those two elements together as far as they're the same thing. So it kind of helps pull elements together. So maybe what I need to do is make a cluster. These leaves work really great too. So if I clustered it like this, and then put them on, do some little foam squares, will be great. Perfect. Yes, I like that. All right, let's pop this up a little bit. All right, so there we go. I'll just do my journaling right here and um, we're all done. So, um, like I said, if you want this handout, you can go to my um, Scrap Happy with Kelly Facebook group. I'll put the link also in the comments when I can. Um, and you can go there and get this layout. It's a PDF. And if you make this, if you use this layout or use the sketch to make a layout, I would love for you to take a picture of it and post it in that group under, um, in the comments of this sketch. So that way everybody can enjoy and get some great ideas from everybody else and we love it. So 
Hope you guys have a great time. Hope you enjoyed watching me put this layout together to show you how you can take a single page sketch, make it into a two page um, layout um, that looks fabulous. Um, and hope you guys have a great day and happy scrapbooking. Bye-bye.